Welcome. In this video clip, we will look at the subtraction strategy called the removal strategy for subtraction. In order for students to be successful with this strategy, they must have a strong understanding of place value as well as the relationship between the part and the whole. Students who view subtraction as taking away will be attracted to this strategy. This strategy directly relates to computational fluency standards, asking students to use their knowledge of numbers and number relationships to subtract fluently. The removal strategy for subtraction teaches students the ability to decompose numbers into easy to remove parts. Students will need to keep the minuend intact and remove the subtrahend into its parts. The key to this strategy is to help them realize when this is and is not an efficient strategy. The closer the minuend and subtrahend are, the more likely students are to use counting back as a strategy. Counting back in chunks is more efficient as the number gets farther apart. Now I will model and introduce the removal subtraction strategy to the students. Boys and girls, subtraction means to find the difference between two numbers. For example, if I was subtracting 56 minus 35, I'm looking for the difference between 56 and 35. We're going to break our subtrahend, or the smaller number, 35, up into tens and fives. So we will have 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5, which is the same as 35. So 56 minus 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5 will be the same as 56 minus 35. So now we're going to show this on the number line. We will put our minuend, or the bigger number, at the end of the number line and jump back in groups of tens and fives. So we're going to start with 56, and I'm going to jump back 10, and I'll be at 46. Then I'm going to take from 46 and jump back 10 more, and I'll be at 36. And we're going to do it one more time, 36 minus 10, and we'll be at 26. So now we've subtracted 30, we have 5 more to subtract, to subtract our 35, so we're going to go from 26, take away 5, and we'll end up at 21. So we know that 56 minus 35 will equal 21. So let's try another problem. 38 minus 29. We're going to do this the same way. We're going to take our smaller number of the subtrahend, and we're going to break it into our parts. 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 4, which is the same as 29. So we know that 38 minus 29 is the same as saying 38 minus 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 4. So we're going to put a bigger number, the minuend, at the end of our number line, 38. And we're going to jump back in groups of 10s, 5s, and 4s. So 38 minus 10, we're going to jump back 10, and we'll be at 28. We're going to jump back 10 more from 28. We'll be at 18. Now we've subtracted 20. We have 9 more to do. We're going to break 9 up into 5 and 4. So 18 minus 5 will give me 13. 13 minus 4. And I'll end up at 9. So we know that 38 minus 9 is going to equal... 38 minus 29 is going to equal 9. When introducing this strategy, it is best to start with very simple examples so students can easily see the number relationships. Developing a sequence of problems to foster this strategy is not necessary. Instead, look for appropriate times to discuss when the strategy is and is not appropriate. 